Hello and welcome back to another tutorial on Emma's Crafty Space. Um, my name is Emma Fawcett and I'm a UK Stampin' Up! demonstrator based in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Um, so this is my second tutorial. Um, this little project um, is actually cased from a Stampin' Up! demonstrator known as the Paper Pixie. Her boxes and little bags are absolutely amazing so I definitely would encourage you to maybe jump, jump over and see her channel. Um, she's a really talented lady. Um, this project is her mini origami handbag I think the, it's called. Um, I was actually lucky to be asked to be to present at On Stage a couple of years ago and I had to uh, present the share what you love sweet and I actually upsized this so in this tutorial I'm going to do this little bag and then I'll do another video um, to show you it upsized into a much larger handbag so um, you can kind of just see the difference it also means any you've got different sizes that you can maybe use for gift packaging so we'll just make a start so I am using the best dressed papers again although they are retiring they are just so pretty I'm just going to do a quick flip through so you can see front and back. Um, they are really, really pretty, but unfortunately they are retiring at the end of the month. But I just love the floral sides to them. Okay, this one's probably one of my favourites. So you can see the front and the back, how different they are. Okay. Absolutely beautiful, really colourful. Um, the floral images look like they've been watercolored. A lot of them look like they've been watercolored. I just think they're so pretty. So this is what we're going to use for this project. Um, they are so this, so this is six by six, and it is very simple. So this is the one I'm going to use. So the first thing you have to do, you're going to need like something that you can burnish your edges with it. So you're going to go corner to corner. Okay. You need nice, because this is technically origami, so you, you do need nice crisp edges on it. So I would definitely encourage you to use a bone folder or something else that you can find to give you that nice sharp edge on your creases. Corner to corner again. And top to bottom. Okay. So every time you're folding, you're going to be creasing. Once you get to this stage, you are going to push these two sides into the center. So like that. So I'll hold it this way to do this one. So push that up. And then like that. And again, crease. Okay. And then once you get to this stage, you now then have to get your scoreboard. Move this wee handbag out of the way, and you put your flat edge to the top, and you're going to be scoring at two and one eighths. So I'm just making sure that's tied into the corner. So two and one eighths, and three and seven eighths, and you have to do this on both sides. So two and one eighths. Now just be careful when you're going down here because the paper's quite thick because it's all folded over on itself so you might actually lose way of your track on your way down. Just try and keep it firm, pressure and consistent and just try and keep it in the track. Okay, so two and one eighth and three and seven eighths. Okay, so you can put that away now. And then you are going to, down this score line you're going to bring this over. And then this straight line has to measure up with this line. So I put this here, and this was a tip that the Paper Pixie gave in her tutorial. Put this here and then just bring that out and just marry those two edges up together. And the point should be at that center line. Okay, and give it a good crease. The same with this side. The good thing with YouTube is you can pause and restart and go back and forth so if you don't quite catch it the first time you can just go back so this edge here has to go to this edge 
put your rose roller there. Marry the two edges and you can see your two points are meeting there in the middle. Okay, so that is one side done. Flip it over and repeat it. Okay, just press down there just to get that little flap over, that edge over. That one's just not quite meeting the center, so I'm just adjusting that again. Okay, so you can see it's all nice and flush there and they're meeting in the center. And then this is your final side. So this is probably the trickiest part of the project. Clean that over, make sure they're meeting in the middle. Okay, and that is pretty much, it's a bit like a rocket. But that is the shape that we're going for now. Um, so what your next step is, you have to kind of open the bag a bit. And kind of like put your finger down to the bottom. And make push it out flat. Just at the bottom. So you can see it just all kind of pings out on itself. That's fine. You can just like push it all back in on itself again. Which is like that. Okay, so push it all down and kind of flatten down the bottom. And then just push them down into each other again. So you can see these here kind of keep wanting to ping out. So to lock them down, you basically fold that down over into there. The same with this one. And you can see they're still trying to ping up. So we're going to add a wee glue dot to them. So just set that down into there. Give it a wee press for a wee second just till it all bonds. And I've lifted a glue dot on them with them. So. Again. This bit can be a bit fiddly, but it does need to be done because you want that um, those to be secure because they're basically holding and locking everything into place for you, keeping it in its shape. Just making sure I have my glue dot on there. So that is basically it. You could leave it like that and just sell it or um, use it as a little tote. Maybe put a wee handle over the side and just keep it like that because you still got those gorgeous crease lines on the front. So I'm just going to show you 360 view of it. That's the base. So you can see where all your nice score lines are on there too. So your next stage is, is just try and manipulate it. Um, so if you look at this, you can see how the sides are all kind of like plushed out. It's a bit like a, carp like a Mary Poppins kind of carpet bag. So this is just basically manipulating it into the shape that you want it. So I always kind of like put my finger down at the bottom, but push the top in, kind of manipulate it. And do the same with this. And you can see there then, now if you want it a bit more poofier, you know, you can just play about with it. But that is basically the, the main part of your bag done. So the next step step is you are going to make your little closure. So you need a one and three quarter inch punch. And I'm using lovely lipstick as well for this because it is part of the sweet. So it's picking out the big pink floor here. And I'm just trying to find my notes. So you've got a one and three quarter inch circle and you're going to score it at three quarters of an inch and then an inch. So that gives you a little um, quarter of an inch gap at the top. So that is basically this part of the bag. And then the wee handle is, it's two and a half inches by a quarter of an inch and you're, it's quite hard to get in there to score it a quarter. So if you just put it up here and score at two and a quarter and then turn it uh, and do two and a quarter. And that is your handle. So, again, we are just going to give that a good crease because you want a nice stiff closure at the top. Your handle, you're going to go like, just curl it so it has a nice natural curl and you're breaking up all the fibres and softening that. And then where your creases are, you fold them back in the opposite direction. So you can see. Okay, set that down. So wet glue is probably the best for this. Um, and if you have a wee look around your bag and see what 
way you prefer to be your front so I think I want that to my front because you can see those nice purple flowers whereas more just foliage than that so this is going to be my back so just glue one side here okay and then to the crease line okay so just hold that a wee second and then I'm going to sometimes I would use magnets but this time I'm going to use um velcro dots so just I already have them paired up the positive and the negative and it just means in that there it's easier for placement of them Obviously, um, over time, it might just the paper might soften a bit where you have the velcro, so you just have have to work with it. That's why I nearly prefer magnets, but just for speed for this tutorial, I thought this would be easier. So just until you have it completely adhered, just put it on very very gently. Okay, just so that you can give it a good press. Okay, so that you can really see it's starting to take shape now. And then your little handle. Just it should fit across because it's the same width as that score line. So just hold it for a minute or two because obviously with it being curved, it's always going to try and kick out against itself. So if you just hold it for a minute or two um, until the glue just takes. Okay, and for these little bits, I am using. The little gold glittery enamel dots they were in the christmas catalogue but again they're carrying over too so i'm just going to pick up two now i'm going to use the small ones because obviously it's only a quarter of an inch wide i can pick them up and the reason i'm using the gold ones is because i'm going to add one of the best dressed tassels and it's got like a lovely gold metallic thread around it So I want it all to kind of match now. So these are the colours of our tassels. So the petal pink's quite muted in this and so is the pretty peacock, but I think I'm gonna go with the petal pink. And I did touch these, they are very, very lightweight. So I am just going to use a glue dot. Normally when I'm using something where you don't need too much of the glue dot exposed, I actually fold the glue dot in half that and then I'm just going to stick it to the ring now you could go down the lines of piercing a, a hole in that and um, just manipulate that around the ring so you're getting that good sticky edge and that is basically it and um, you could go around you could pierce a hole and maybe um, feed a wee bit of um, twine or something through and actually knot it in through and then you know fasten it at the back and it would maybe give it a bit of movement but with it being such a small project and it's quite fiddly, I didn't want to start with that now. So you can see how cute these little bags are. are. Um, again, go over to the Paper Pixie and see some of her tutorials. Her things are amazing. So you can see this bag's a bit more poofy. I'm just going to fix this side. So as you can see where this, this poofy bit is a bit higher than the other side. So let's just try and get them all even. But play about with it, don't be scared of it. The paper's quite pliable. Um, only to a point, obviously, because you don't want to manipulate it too much to, to get to the point where it'll actually start breaking down at the crease, creases and tear on you. So just be careful with it. But you can just see how cute they are. They are very tiny and very pretty. But um, you could probably get like something like a Lindor ball or Frere Rocher or like a bath bomb or something in them. They are really, really dinky and tiny, but hopefully you'll be able to have a go and um, maybe use different types of papers and colours and just make them all look different. As I say, I'm going to I'm going to do another video and size them up so you can see the bigger size in them too. And uh, that again, they will hold even more. Hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and hope to see, hopefully see you soon. Thank you. Bye.